Well, good evening, Northgate family and all the friends of Northgate. We're happy that you can uh, join us tonight. As you can tell, uh, I'm in a different location. I'm in the foyer of the church. And uh, so we thought we'd change things up a little bit uh, tonight. And um, we'll, we're still in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. And um, we'll, we'll, we should finish that up uh, tonight. Uh, Actually, but before we get started in chapter 4, and we'll be starting with verse 23, uh, just to let you know that this whole thing with uh, Peter and John and the Sanhedrin and the Jewish leaders, this all began in chapter 3 of Acts when Peter and John were on their way to the temple and uh, there was a man who was begging. He had been crippled for about 40 years, almost his entire life. And uh, the Lord saw fit to heal him and to use Peter and John to bring him to health. And so this caused a, a, a great, great uh, stir among the, uh, um, among the uh, Sanhedrin, among the Jewish leaders. And uh, they wanted to know why this man is now walking. And Peter's been explaining to them. Also, Peter's used the opportunity to, to preach the good news of the gospel and that it was because of Jesus this, that this man now walks and is well. And so they're having a difficult time uh, with, with P Peter and John. They made, them leave the, they made them leave the room the other night. And if you remember, they had counsel among themselves. They decided to let them go. But it was not without a warning to never, ever again speak or teach or preach in the name of Jesus. And so uh, this is what they were left with. They let them go, but they warned them sternly. Don't preach, don't teach, don't speak in the name of Jesus any longer. And you got to think about that. I mean, why? What is it that Jesus has done that was so wrong? Uh, all, all he's ever done was make people's lives better. He fed them. He healed them. He taught them the ways of God. And so... There's something, there's something very significant here when it, when it comes to them wanting to stop the message. This, is, this, this, as you know, is the work of the enemy to stop the, the preaching of the gospel. And so we'll pick it up in uh, verse uh, 23. And, uh, and let's go. Let's, le let's read uh, 23 and 24. Chapter 4. So as soon as they were freed... Uh, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and the elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them. So after Peter and John left the Sanhedrin, he had told them, uh, what had happened with the Sanhedrin. He told the rest of the believers that, that once again, they were to never speak or preach or teach in the name of Jesus ever again. Then, when they heard this, when all the believers heard this, I want you to listen to what they did. They started to pray. They started to talk to God about the threat that was, that was uh, put before them. And, uh, and the threats were real. There had already been believers who have been, who have been beaten and have been abused. And so uh, this threat was very real to them. So what they started to do, the first thing they did is they started to pray once again. And uh, this is a great lesson for us. I think we can learn from this. I think when we have a problem, let me ask you, what is the first thing you do? Do you take it to the Lord? You say, Lord God, uh, I, I'm faced with this situation, and uh, I'm not so sure what I should do. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling on you. I'm talking to you. I'm going to pray about it. And that's exactly what they did. These early believers, um, they recognized that they were talking to the God of everything. Uh, they reminded themselves that he made all things. Uh, he rules over everything as they, were, as they began their prayer. They acknowledged that God was bigger, and, uh, and he was bigger than any problem that they would ever, ever face. 
So even when we face difficulties or we face threats, uh, it's good to go to our source. And it's good for us to remind ourselves who we're going to. We're going to the creator of the universe. We're going to the God who can, who can help us. We're going to the God who loves us. He gave his son Jesus for us. And so we can learn from this. And this is, what, this is exactly what they did. Let's go to verse 25 and we'll read through 28. They said, they continued in their prayer here. It says, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through your ancestor David, your servant. And you said this, they, where are the, why are the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against the Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipas, uh, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles and all the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. So this is, these are the believers who are acknowledging uh, what has happened in the past. And so these believers, they were Jews. And, and so they called uh, David their father, and that's why they referred to David out of Psalms chapter 2. So they called unto, unto their father, not, not called unto their father, but they called David their father, only because he was a famous king in Israel, as you know. He was, uh, he was the greatest king Israel had ever known. They spoke words in their prayer regarding, regarding what David said in Psalms chapter 2. Um, this prophecy was written, like the prophecy that we just read, it was written a thousand years before the birth of Jesus. This prophecy was about the Messiah. In Psalms, uh, these, Gentile, these Gentiles, were the, were the, they were the Romans who had made up plans to try to stop Jesus. So when, when uh, Luke referred to them as 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 Gentiles, or in their prayer, when they, were, when they referred to the people who wanted to stop the message, they were referring to the Gentiles, along with the Romans, who made plans to try to stop Jesus, to try to stop him from preaching. So way back in, way back in the second chapter of the, of the book of Psalms, uh, 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 David prophesied that this type of thing was, was going to happen. We know that it was the Jews who united with the Romans, uh, including Herod, Pilate, and uh, they, they were all just bent on making sure that they would kill Jesus. But they could not stop the message. They couldn't stop the message. He, he came alive again. And this is what Peter has been telling them over and over and over again, ever since the, the lame man at the gate beautiful was healed. He, he reminded them that it was Jesus who did this. Yes, he, he, he's still alive. You thought you killed him. You thought you got rid of him, but he is still alive. So the apostles now were even curing the sick in Jesus' name. The church was also growing at this time. We talked last week that another 5,000 were added to the church. And many people now were hearing the good news. Uh, and, and in, the, in the prophecy, they said that everything was in God's plan and that God had it planned long, long ago. Let's go to verse uh, 29 and 30. Where did I go here? Oh, here. Flip the page. And it says, And now, O Lord, hear their threats. These are, the, these are the people who are still praying after they heard the threats. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. Many, uh, many miraculous and signs, signs and wonders are, had been done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So they said to the Lord in their prayer, 
Hear, O Lord, their threats. The Sanhedrin had done some really bad things to, to the uh, Jews who are now becoming believers in Christ. But these believers did not pray that God would stop these, these people, the Sanhedrin, uh, or, or would stop their threats. Instead, they asked God to give them courage to continue to tell people about Jesus. It wasn't like they said, Lord, you hear their threats. Now I want you to do something to them or about them. No, they didn't, they didn't say that. They prayed that they would have courage to continue to preach the gospel. That, that amazes me. I mean, what they were receiving, even with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, was so strong and so powerful in their name, in, in, in the name of the Lord. They were, they, were so, uh, uh, they were so convinced that Jesus really was who he says he was. So they didn't ask God to, you know, pay the Sanhedrin back for all their threats. No, they didn't say that. They didn't say, oh God, we're really, we're really uh, afraid and worried. We're here wringing our hands because of these threats. No, they said, because of these threats, oh God, we want you to give us co uh, uh, courage and boldness to continue to do what? Preach the good news, preach the gospel. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Remember he said that? Go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Go and preach the good news of the gospel. So this is what they were asking God for courage for. They were saying, God, give us courage that we would be bold in our, in our declaration of who Jesus is. They knew the abuse was coming and it would be physical abuse. But uh, uh, they asked God to show his power when they spoke uh, with Jesus' authority. They said, give us your power. You know, a, a good illustration of that, and we're going to be coming to that in about uh, two or three weeks when we talk about Stephen in the seventh chapter of the, of the book of Acts. Uh, Stephen's a great example of someone who was preaching the gospel. The Bible even tells us, as you read, the, as you read that portion of Scripture in chapter 7, the Bible even tells us that the people were so convicted of the words that Peter, that uh, 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 Philip was speaking, or Stephen, I'm sorry, that, that Stephen was speaking. It says that they even plugged their ears and they were yelling back at Stephen. They didn't want to hear the goodness of the gospel or the goodness, the good news. And so they would even plug their ears, then they began to stone them. We'll talk more about that in a few weeks to come. But th that's just a, an example of the power that they were asking God for in their prayer today. Uh, verse 31, it says that after they finished praying, the place that they were meeting shook. There was a, there was a shaking of the building as they were praying. Once again, just like on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and filled everyone. It seemed like God had answered their prayers almost immediately, and they were filled with boldness. You know, as Christians, we too can ask the Holy Spirit to fill us with his boldness. If you ever feel like, I, I, I just feel a little intimidated around certain people, maybe it's family members, maybe it's your neighbors, Maybe it's people you work with. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you boldness, give you the right timing to speak to those who are, uh, uh, who are in need of the good news of the gospel. And when that happens, we're, you're going to know it. You're going to know it. Uh, uh, just like the people then. It says it, sh it shook the whole house. Maybe your house won't shake, but, but you'll begin to act differently. You'll begin to, you'll begin to trust the Holy Spirit uh, to, to help you to become more like Jesus. And that's what happens. The Holy Spirit, he helps us to do the things uh, for the kingdom of God that we can't do on our own. And, uh, so, and that's to love, that's to preach, that's to, that's to give, that's to care for other people. And so, and so the Holy Spirit will give you the power to do that. Number two, the believers... Uh, begin to share their possessions with each other. Let's go to verse uh, 32 through 34. It says that all the believers were united in heart and in mind, and they felt uh, that what they had owned was not their own. 
So they shared everything that they had. The apostles testified powerfully uh, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and God's great blessing upon them all. There were no people, there were no needy people among them because those who owned their land or houses would sell them and uh, uh, they would bring the money to the apostles to give to those who were in need. That's amazing. I mean, it's, it, that's a, those are just powerful acts of being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the numbers of the first church, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the members of the first church really cared for people. And it wasn't just in name only. They actually cared for people. They just did not say that they cared, but they ca- actually cared for people. They showed their love by what they did. Uh, people still own things at that time, but they would share those things with everyone who needed them. I want to tell you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was, was and is more than just tongues of fire and wind and shaking of buildings. It was lived out in their, in their everyday lives. They saw people in need and they cared for them. Oh God, help us to continue to be that to people who are in need. Uh, some believers, they owned houses and they owned land. Uh, and if anyone needed money, they would sell their houses. They would sell their land. See, the, the interesting thing about this to me is nobody forced them to do this. This was something that was alive within them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Nobody said, hey, you have to start doing this from, from here on out. They didn't. They just felt like this is the right thing to do. And so they truly cared about each other. And so, therefore, they wanted to give. Uh, well, you talk about, you talk about the, uh, uh, the picture of, of, of godly people, the picture of true Christianity is when they give to those who are in need. Verses 35 through 37, and we'll end it here. Um, it says, and, and, and they bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, verse 36, there was, there was Joseph, one of the apostles named Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi, and he came from the island of Cyprus. It's, listen to what he did. He sold a field that he owned, and he brought the money to the apostles. This means... When it says that they brought the money to the, the apostles, it actually means that they, uh, that they laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, this, in humility, was a sign of them actually giving back to God. And uh, they were offering the money to God. And so here in, here in verse 37, it tells us of a, of a, man, a man named Barnabas. Uh, they called him Joseph, but he also went by Barnabas. And he sold this field that he owned and he brought the money and he made an offering to the apostles. Uh, I tell you, I think we need more of this in the church, you know, uh, uh, worldwide. We, we need more of us giving. And I know we do and, and God, God honors that for when we do. But I tell you, there was a spirit and it was because of the power of the Holy Spirit. None of this was happening until they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, they, and they, started, they started preaching the good news of the gospel. And they realized now that there was a God in heaven who loved them very much. That he sent his son Jesus to die for them. And, that, and, and, and this very God would pour into their lives the power of the Holy Spirit. I just want to encourage you today. If you have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit since you've been a believer, I, I just want to encourage you just to seek the Lord. The Bible tells us those who ask receive. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, the door will be open to them. And if you're listening to this tonight or at, at, at any other time, I, just, I would just encourage you to say, Lord, I want to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I see what had happened. I see what had happened to the first church when that happened to them. Lord, I want to be more like you in giving and in teaching and preaching the good news of the gospel. But fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me boldness. Take away the fear. Take away the intimidation in my life and fill me with the Holy Spirit so I too can be like the first church who are trying to be like Jesus. So God bless you. Have a great night and we'll see you next week.